the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Yeah, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? You guys good? Everyone good? Awesome. I feel like you're uh, staring at me. It's the jacket, right? It's the jacket. It's duck hunting season. I just thought it was appropriate. You know, I, I, the thing is, is I got to remember to move because if I'm too still, you, you won't be able to see me, especially with all the, all the Christmas trees and everything. So anyways, um, I'll, I'll just remember to move every, every so often. Uh, but it's not about me. All right, let's go. If you've got your Bibles, let's go. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. If you haven't been with us for like 18 weeks and you're like, man, last time I was here, you guys were in Genesis chapter 1. Yeah, so? <laughs> we're taking our time, okay? Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to begin in verse 1. Um, now, if this is your first time, we are going through the book of Genesis, uh, chapter by chapter, uh, verse by verse. Um, and we're going to take a... a about 80, 100 years and go through the book of Genesis. And then when we're done with Genesis, um, believe it or not, we're actually going to study the entire book of Revelation. So we're going through the first book of the Bible, the last book of the Bible. Um, and we're going to find that a lot of people, um, what they think is actually the end times is actually the beginning times. <laughs> yep, so we're not looking to blow things up. We're looking to uh, do some gardening and make things right again. Amen. Entering back into this beautiful Edenic mandate to be fruitful and multiply and take dominion of this earth. Genesis 1. Bereshit is in the first epoch of time. So this isn't a point of time. This is a period of time. Was a who. Who? Elohim. Mighty God. The one worthy to be worshipped. Bereshit. So Bereshit. Elohim, uh, what did he do? Bara, okay? Bara means he created, okay? So in the beginning, mighty God created what? He created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was tohu vavohu, okay, um, which is formless and, and void. Um, it was uh, chaotic, okay? And it was empty, okay? Um, and we also see here... Um, uh, uh, Tohu vovohu and chosek, which is the Hebrew word for darkness. So here it's chaotic, it's nonsensical, it's, it's weird, it's dark. And where is God? Where is the ruach? Where is the breath of God, the spirit of God, the very presence of God? It says that there in the middle of the chaos waters is God. And what's he doing? He's hovering all up in it. <laughs> He's brooding. So here's our God. He's brooding. He's hovering in the midst of the chaos waters. And God speaks, let there be light. And immediately there is light. And God saw that the light was tov. Everyone say tov. You're like, wow, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, unlike the person sitting next to me, was actually here last Sunday, and last Sunday, you said it was Tav. And all day, you were like, it's Tav. And this whole week, I was just like, it's Tav, it's Tav, it's Tav. I apologize. <laughs> and this is how it goes, okay? The, the very first time I introduce you to a Hebrew word, you know, it like, it takes a few weeks, you know, and, and like, you know, this, this last week, uh, pa Pastor Patty was trying to explain to me, like, like Pastor Jerry, it's, it's Kosek, and I was like, Kosek, and she's like, no, Kosek, and I was like, Kosek, she's like, no, Kosek, and then finally, Pastor Sandy was like, Darren, shut up and listen to her, she's trying to help you, and I was like, I'm, I'm listening, 
okay. It's not Tav, it's Tov. Okay. God creates light and he says, and it is Tov. What does that mean? It means it's beautiful. Yes, it means it's beautiful, but it's also practical and useful. Okay. Now, we have two different kinds of people in the church. We, like, we have people that are practical and useful. Okay, they're all into is it practical and is it useful. And then you have other people and you're like, yeah, but is it cute? <laughs> this is our amazing God. That God, he carves that. He says, let there be light. And he looks at, at, and, and he looks at what he created. And it is, it is practical. It is useful. It is governmental. And it's beautiful. And this is the, the word that the Hebrews would call tov, which means that it is, it is absolutely wonderful and amazing. And yet it is governmental and really, really overall very, very cool. Okay. Let's keep reading. I'm glad we had that conversation. I don't feel like we get to talk anymore. Okay. Everyone say day one. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that it, it, it concludes with, that it says that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So that there's still, there's light and there's also darkness. And, he, and, and it says that he actually carved the two. He actually separated and divided them. And then he identified them. So you got um, uh, a day and night. And then each verse, each day, it always ends the same way. It ends with this, with this beautiful rhythm. Um, and we'll see this even again today. We'll be studying the fourth day. And it concludes, and there was evening and there was morning Day one. Verse six, and God said, let there be a rakia. Okay, this is the idea of a, of a dome. This is the area where God actually comes into the middle of the chaos waters and forms a dorm, dome in the middle of the chaos waters, separating the waters above and the waters below. On the second day, we, we see that God creates the skies above and the seas um, below. And we're going to look at this a bit today because um, it's in the rakia that God would actually create the, the cosmos, okay? So he creates this second place, this place of atmosphere, this place of air. It, it, it's, a, it's a realm. And how does he create it? Yep, he speaks it into being, but it says that he, he separated the waters or he divided. So again, day one, God shows up, he speaks up, he creates, he separates, he divides. Day two, God shows up, he speaks up, he creates a realm, he separates and divides uh, the, the chaos uh, waters. We see all these incredible uh, themes, and then it concludes, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day, okay? And then we see in verse 9, and God said, let the waters below and the heavens be gathered into one place of standing pool uh, water together. He collects all the waters and, uh, and all of a sudden these mountains begin to come up from the earth and they begin to stretch up uh, into the heavens. So we've got mountains and we've got valleys and God calls the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he calls seas and God saw that this was Tove, and he affirmed it, and he sustained it, and God said, I'm not done yet. No, day three is interesting. There are two executive orders. So God creates dry land, but then he says, now let's clothe it. Okay, so he says, let the earth sprout tender vegetation, plants yielding seed, and, and fruit trees, and Bearing with, with, with fruit trees limited, consistent with their kind. And you got seed trees and all these things. And where are there Christmas trees? Yep. There were Christmas trees on the third day. Okay. And the earth sprouts for us all of these things. And it's amazing. And God creates all these plants. And seed is a big deal. He talks a lot about seed. Why? Because God creates plants with the ability to create more plants. So God creates on the third day creation with the ability to keep on creating. He's so creative that his creation creates. Okay. And what does God do? He looks at it and he says, it is tov and there was evening and there was morning the third day, which brings us today to verse 14, 
Okay. Now, guess what happens in uh, in verse fourteen? This is it's a it's a new day. You know, God wakes up like He does every day and turns on um, uh, Christian radio. Hello, and today is going to be a crazy day. Why? Because God's going to be creating. It's the fourth day. What's He going to make today? I don't know, Sam. But I don't know. It's going to be good. It's always good. Why? Because it's Christian radio, and every day is always good on Christian radio. But let's play a semi-sad song that'll go into a happy chorus to remind us that even if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, which God didn't do, because He doesn't have a bed. <laughs> Not till the second day, Sam. But <laughs> here we go. It's the fourth day. All right, good. All right, here we go. That's why I just don't listen to it. All right, here we go. Um, you know, if I woke up, you know, can you imagine waking up? To, to, all right, here we go. <laughs> good times. All right, it's good. Stay focused there. On the fourth day, okay, and everybody said, and God said, why? Because every time God creates, he shows up and then he speaks up. Which is why the church is learning how to truly show up and speak up. I see a theme here. We wake up, we show up, and we speak up. Why? Because that's how we create. So I see a theme on the fourth day. And God said, and we can all read this together, everybody ready? Let there be lights. Ooh. Okay. And everybody say, ooh. If you want to, you can even say, ah. This word here is, um, this Hebrew, it's ma'or. It's, it's not the sun, the moon, the stars. Your, your, your children will be learning this downstairs. We keep it easy for them. And they'll learn on the fourth day, God created the, the sun, the moon, the stars. But the, light, the word that we have is ma'or, which is the word for lights. And it says that God placed them in the, in the rakia of the shamahim, which is in the heavens. Uh, the reason why he doesn't say the sun, the moon, and the stars here within the text is because it's not God that actually gave the identity of the sun, the moon, and the stars. It was actually the Canaanites, many years later, ascribed pagan identities to these ma'or, these heavenly lights. Now, these lights, they've got several different bullet points on their job description. The first is it says that he created the Ma'or and the Shamayim to do what? Again, you guessed it, to separate and divide. To divide what? To divide the day from the night. I wonder why um, this hasn't caught our attention perhaps earlier. I mean, this is the very first time that I, that I see over and over and over that creation takes place through separation and division. I mean, we've all read the we've all read Hebrews where the author says that the that the that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword to do what? To separate and divide, right? The the the, the, the marrow from the bone bone and the, the soul from, from the spirit. And yet for most of us we've always been told that division was like demonic. And the first word, the first time you see division used in the Bible, it's not, it's not demonic. It's actually quite, quite redemptive. We actually see God stepping into chaotic environments and separating them and dividing them and bringing about order out of chaos and actually bringing about um, shalom out of uh, very difficult kind of, kinds of places. And I kind of wonder if the church has been so afraid of dividing that it has kept us from creating or using our influence to step into anxious places and inserting the dominion of heaven. Again, why did God create the stars? To actually bring a certain form of redemptive division and separation. And I, it, the, the, the theme, the pattern is that where does God divide? He brings division in these 
chaos waters. He brings division uh, to the darkness, and he does it with these heavenly lights. And I think that actually God wants to bring some division and some separation within the church. I actually think that God wants to bring some division and some separation within Seattle. I actually think that, that God's word wants to be alive and active, actually like a two-edged sword, but the church has been so afraid of the sword. The church just wants potpourri and candles everywhere, but, but we've been afraid of the sword. And it's time for the church to see that the word of God is is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And what do swords do? Swords, swords divide. Swords divide stuff. And it's time for the church to realize that it's time for us to arise and to shine and to step back into this Genesis 1 prototype where we show up, we speak up, we begin to create, and then we realize that even though we created, we don't, we don't cower back from what we created thinking that it's perfect in and of himself. For God creates, and then he, he leans into his own creation and begins to separate and divide even his own creation. What has God given to you that you've been afraid to actually go to the next step to bring about identity, separation, and division, what has God given to you that you've been afraid to touch because you think you're going to break it? Listen, listen, what God has given you, your destiny is not a television set or a computer. Don't be afraid of your destiny like you're afraid of technology. Don't be afraid to break something. God created it, and then he stepped into it, and he says, I'm going to divide it. I'm going to carve it. I'm going to identify it. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to lean into it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert my control. You see, the church has been so afraid of, of control. The church has been so afraid. So what do we do? We just, because this, 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 there's this, this, this thing that, that, like, I don't want to control people, and you shouldn't. You don't have permission to control people. But God has given us an earth. He's given us dominion over a planet. We can't even control ourselves, let alone insert dominion into the planet. We see that what does God do? He creates a realm. He steps inside of the realm. He inserts his dominion, and he carves, and he brings identity, and he, he's not afraid of separating what he created. What is God calling for you to step into, into that place of your destiny, to step into that place of your identity, and to say, yes, it's beautiful, but it's not complete yet. It's not perfect yet. There are still areas that are out of control, and it's not because of your neighbor. It's not because of your spouse. It's not because of your pastor. It's, it's because you are afraid to step in with the sword. You're afraid to step in with the word. You're afraid to bring division. You're afraid to bring separation. You're afraid to bring forth the kingdom, to make it right. And if there's areas of your heart, areas of your home, areas of your, of your marriage, areas of things, things that God has given to you, but you're afraid to insert healthy kingdom control. And so you are okay with things being out of control because at least people are not blaming you for trying to insert your control don't be afraid of your authority. God has created you in his image and likeness. He even created the stars with authority to bring division, to bring about cosmos out of chaos. The word cosmos means divine order. The opposite of cosmos is chaos. And what brought about the cosmos, but the governing jurisdiction and role given to the stars. And in a few weeks, you're going to see that God makes something far more glorious than the stars. He creates his own son, his own daughter, created in his own image and likeness to dwarf that which the stars could never do. And that is to insert government into this place called earth and her systems subverting a worldly system by bringing forth the word of God that is sharper than any two-edged sword to separate the soul from the spirit and bone from marrow. And God said, let there be maor in the rakia of the shamayim to separate and divide the day from the night. The second function, the second bullet on their job description as God said, and let them be for signs. Signs are interesting. Signs are good. Signs are helpful, um, especially if you're if you're me. I need signs. Um, for example, like when I'm driving. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'm 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 a, I'm a proactive thinker when I'm driving. 
So God likes to speak to me while I'm driving. And sometimes I go into other realms while I'm driving. It's not, it's not, I, I'm not watching YouTube videos while I'm, I'm not, you know, like, you know, how to create and sell NFTs on you. You know, I, I'm not doing that. It's just like I'm driving and all of a sudden I'll be like, oh my gosh, there, there's, a, there's a sign. And that sign is telling me that I need to turn my blinkers on now, my signalers. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm legal. I'm legit. Now I'm getting off. This is my exit. Here we go. Um, signs tell you kind of where you're at, and they tell you kind of where you're going. And what's interesting is, is it says here that God has created the ma'or to be signs. What's interesting is that within the charismatic kind of thing that we find ourselves a part of, we love, and you are we, even if you don't even know this yet, you, um, you love signs and wonders, okay? Just not, I can see you, so just nod your head, like, right? You're like, I don't even know what, what signs, trust me, you love them, you're going to be here a while, you're going to love signs and wonders. What's a sign and wonder? A sign and a wonder, it's, it's a mystical, supernatural thing that God pops into our present reality that makes you wonder, and it takes it redirects your attention your heart onto God but what's interesting is that the, the very first sign and wonder that we see in our Bible is the Maor where God says these lights they exist as an agency by which God will reveal himself when we look up, we see a sign and a wonder. When humanity looks at the stars, the stars humble humanity. Why? Because we are confronted with the divine agency of a creator who executed this with brilliance and perfection. Whenever humanity looks at the stars, the stars humble humanity into this reminder of no matter what you say, no matter what you think, oh, there is a God. There is a God who executed and triggered this divine design in its perfection, and there is no way that you can look at the stars and the cosmos and see that perfection, to see that divine order, and to think that that just somehow big banged itself into existence. How could that kind of perfection big banged itself into that? That's not the kind of terminology that scientists use, okay? But, I mean, I mean, come on I mean come on look up let the stars be also for signs let them remind humanity of my existence and it also says the third bullet point on their job on their job description is for seasons this isn't necessarily speaking of seasons of the fall, winter, spring, summer. This is actually speaking of seasons related to festivals and religious feasts according to a liturgical calendar that the signs would be given to the sons and daughters of God to remind humanity at parts of the year to slow down and remember and celebrate and worship this divine creator who we call dad and even within our own calendar and even within this this time of the year we are reminded of a great sign that came to the magi why you got these astronomers and what are they doing they are studying the stars. And all of a sudden, there's a star of the east that captures their attention. And they realize and they recognize that there has been a, a cosmic shift. That there is on the earth a 
a, a habitation of the presence of, of God who has become flesh. And we see the Magi go on this long journey doing what? Following the sign, following the, the, the star. And it is said for this reason that the stars have been given as a gift from God to remind man throughout times of the year to slow down and to look up and to celebrate what Father has done because of His great love for humanity. And the next bullet point on their job description is for days and years. We see that from the stars, humanity had for centuries a creation to be able to be able to harness creation to interpret the solar year so stars became a measuring tool to discern time and natural seasons days months and years and so you and i oftentimes forget to look at the stars why because we get the information that we need on months, days, times, seasons from this. Now I won't show you that. That's my desktop is of my, um, my desktop, whatever you call it, my home screen is of my bride holding a very large gun. And I don't want you to know what it is, except I just told you. Anyways, <laughs> love you babes. All right. Awesome. We don't stare at the stars. Why? Because we now stare at our phones, but before there were phones, there was just the stars. And generations would know where they needed to be, when they needed to plant, when they needed to water, when they needed to harvest, based off of the information given to them from the original divine computer. The first computer was the sun, the moon, and the stars. Because of this brilliance of our great God, now we've got technology, and if you're more analog, I, I even got this bad boy. This is my version of the stars. So it says, this is my, um, this is my, uh, my day planner. And what's this, what's this? Do? It's broken down into 30 minute increments to do what to bring government to my day I need a lot of tools to bring government to my day why again because I got this this wonderful mind that wants to take me into wonderful realms and if it wasn't for tools like this it'd be it'd be probably be safer for everybody if I would just stay in bed right? Amen. Like Darren, Darren, sit down before you hurt yourself, right? And God said, I've created them to bring government, to measure and govern time, to utilize these amazing resources that God has given to us, that God has given us all these incredible resources, and then he gave us his perfect computer to make sure that we can govern the earth with, with strategic wisdom. Isn't he amazing? Yes. Brian Simmons, he puts it like this, that within the cosmos are embedded codes of God's glory, greatness, and wisdom. I did some research this last week into this whole thing of the cosmos and the heavens. I did a Google search. How big is the universe? I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I watched a bunch of uh, scientists, okay, give explanations. They used some really big numbers. Real big. Okay. In fact, they used numbers that were so big that they had to come up with new terms for these numbers. N terms like 
astronomical unit, okay? Terms like, you ready for this one? Light year. Can I tell you what I learned? I'm going to tell you, and this is going to blow your mind. And some of you have watched Christian videos where pastors talk about this kind of stuff, how big it is. We're going we're gonna to go there right now. I'm going to blow your mind with how big the universe is based off of my research. The universe is really, really, really big. You say, no, 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 it's, 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 it's 93 million miles. No, it's not. If the sun were to go around 63,000 asteroids, no, 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 it, no, it, 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 it's not. Uh, we, we know how big the, the, the known universe, no, 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 you don't. But I, I, I did the same research. I, I took the same notes. I look at the same thing. I, I got numbers and measurements. No, they're, 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 they're wrong. Why? Because those guys made it up. They made up those numbers. Why? Because they have no idea how big the universe is. They, they, have, no, they, have, no, they have no idea how, how big, it, it's kind of funny. You know, I'm not dissing the Discovery Channel. I like the Discovery Channel, but they, they claim so many things in the name of science and fact. For example, like if you watch, you can watch the, the documentaries on the dinosaurs where they actually tell you what the raptor actually sounded like, they're like, so little did you know, the, the raptor doesn't actually sound like a rah, or the raptor actually sounds more like duh, 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 duh. How do they know that? How do they know what these dinosaurs sound like? They don't. They make it up. They make up numbers. And how do I know it? Because everybody's numbers are different. Everybody has their own number. And guess what? They're never going to know how big the universe is. Why? Because my Bible says that the cosmos exists to humble man. That the cosmos exists for, so that when you look up, you get lost in their bigness. That the cosmos exists to remind humanity that there is a God and you are not it. <laughs> Isaiah the prophet, he says that our God holds all of the universe, all of the cosmos in his hand. Everyone say, Maor. This is the Hebrew word translated lights. It's not actually used that often in the Bible. In fact, it's used 19 times in previous forms uh, throughout the, the Pentateuch. It's only used two times in the Psalms. In the Proverbs, it's only used once. In Ezekiel, it's also used once. Whenever this is, is used, it's speaking of celestial bodies. It's speaking of, of Maor. It's speaking of the, the sun, the moon, the stars, the cosmos. Every now and then, metaphorically, it speaks of a face or eyes that shine. This is a, this is a rare word, okay? Not used that often. But what's really, really interesting is that there are 10 occurrences in the Pentateuch outside of Genesis Okay, I'll give you just a couple of these references so you can write them in the dark. Exodus 25, 6, Exodus 27, 20, and I'll give you one out of Leviticus, Le Leviticus 24, 2. Darren, what are you talking about? This, this is fascinating. Ten times Moses uses the same word for the cosmos, for the, for the, for the lights that are burning in the night sky. And he he uses them to refer to the light of the lampstand that lights up the tabernacle. 
this is, this is a clue that there's a whole nother dimension to this text. Moses, who penned the book of Genesis, Barashi, is using this word describing how the cosmos is God's sanctuary that the cosmos in source can be seen as a temple to Elohim. Now, there was once a point in time when Andrea and I, we were dating, we'd come to church here during the day, and then at night we'd go to a different church on Sunday night. So we'd come here during the day to get our revival on, to get our presence on, okay? To get whacked and then on Sunday nights we'd go to another church in the Seattle area uh, where we'd get yelled at now I, I was kind of a I, I was I was kind of a, in an unhealthy place at the time and so um, un, unhealthy preaching at that time actually kind of felt good a little bit of abuse actually felt good so um, believe it or not and I'm not telling you to do this but we'd come here and Pastor Gil would tell us you are so loved and gorgeous. And then I'd go to a church on Sunday night where I was told, you are ugly, you are depraved, you are a worm, you are nothing, right? And, um, and, it's, and it's only by God's grace, you know, that's going to get you through this thing. And, and at the time, I actually kind of digged it. I was like, you're right. I, you know, <laughs> tells you I've, I've, come, I've, come, I've come a ways, right? And I don't know if you've ever uh, uh, heard this text preached this way, but I have heard ministers preach the fourth day of creation as a way of dwarfing your place within creation. Maybe you've, you've heard this text taught this way, where like, 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 this thing is so big, it is so massive. Here's a chart, and on the chart, you know, here is, here is the Milky Way, and where is the earth? Oh, what? You don't see it? Oh, you see that little speck? Yeah, that's the entire earth. And where are you? That's right. We don't see you because you're nothing. In the speck of eternity and the cosmos, you're nothing. So shut up. Shut up and worship him. Shut up and worship. You're stupid and dumb. He's not. Worship him. I've heard servants like this. I've heard servants like this. You're, you're just, you're, you're, ah, but God is awesome, but you are not. You're dumb and pointless. Get the worship team up. Let's sing. God, you're awesome, and we are not. God, you're amazing, but we're scum. Yes, I love this, and I loved it. Darren had issues and he's healing. <laughs> Listen, when you look at the fourth day and what God established, don't allow the glory of his brilliance to dwarf you. Why? Because when you look up at the stars, when when you when you walk out of your house, when you put your phone down, and, and maybe maybe even tonight, why? What's what's happening tonight? This is interesting. D that today we're not even in a traditional Christmas series. We're reading we're reading Genesis, and it just so happens that today on December twelfth, we're studying the fourth day and the establishment of the cosmos. And there's something very interesting that's going to happen tonight on December twelfth, twenty twenty one. Moses, can you put up what's going to happen tonight? I didn't even know about this in the first service. Patty said, this is going to happen tonight. The alignment of the five planets. They're calling it the parade of the planets to be visible in the night sky on December 12th. And all you need to know about this celestial event. You can't make this stuff up. Isn't it incredible that you can just read your Bible and prophetic? Isn't it interesting that the Bible is actually God's word? You, you say, I don't hear God's voice. Well, then it's because you don't read your Bible. I don't know when the last time was I heard God's voice. Well, then when was the last time you read your Bible? 
Isn't it interesting? We're reading the Bible today, and God has us on his own little calendar. We haven't caught him off guard. We are reading about the, the, the signs in the heavens, and this, this, this is given to us just for us. All of, <laughs> this isn't for anybody else. It's only for SRC, okay? That's how, that's how special you are. Now listen, Moses, you can take that down. When you look up, at the brilliance of what God has established. God does not create beautiful things to shame you. And God does not reveal his beauty in order to reveal your ugliness. God reveals his glory to, I, to remind you of your identity in him. That when you look up at the heavens, God is saying, yeah, but you are my son. You are my daughter. And I created this for you. That any time you see the greatness of God, it does not exist to make you feel small. The greatness of God reminds us that in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Did you know we believe in the spirit of sonship, amen? We believe in the spirit of sonship that does what? It awakens us to the reality that you've been lied to. You're not an orphan. Why? God doesn't create orphans. For God so loved the world. Why? Because the world and her depravity were still sons and daughters. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He hovers in the chaos and darkness of our imaginations. He hovers within the chaos and darkness of our own souls. And he comes to turn the lights on to give you that epiphany moment that you've been lied to. You're not an outsider. You're not an orphan. You were created in the image and likeness of God for such a time as this, that on the cross, Jesus did not just die for you. He died as you, taking on all your shame, taking on all your betrayal, taking on all the offenses that you've committed against others. He took it upon himself so that if you'd believe in him and confess with your mouth, you would not perish, but you would have life and life abundantly. People ask the question, why is the universe so big? We don't know now, but one day we will know fully, even as we are fully known. And can I tell you something? We're going to need all that space. You know why? Because the new heavens and the new, when, when, when the new Jerusalem comes down and kisses the earth, where is it going to come from? We call this the great reunion when the cloud becomes manifest begin to rule and reign with Christ Jesus. Where we get invited back to Eden, which is not a place for you to just remain. It's just the gateway. The gateway between here and there. And we'll recognize that earth is not big enough for all the generations, for all the nations, for everything, the, the huge, incredible, intergenerational and cosmic plan of our Creator, as we realize that the cosmos is our playground. And that the earth was our sandbox. got to start somewhere. (laughs) 
know what we're going to need to do? We're going to need to learn to wake up, show up, and speak up. Let's try it together. Let's all stand. And I don't mean stand. I want, you to, I want your spirit to stand. Speak to your spirit and say, stand. Stand, get up. I want you to speak to your soul. Stand up. Stand up, soul. On the count of three, we're going to declare, let there be light. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let there be light. Come on. Clap on. Can't you see how connected this thing is? Can't you see how connected you are? Can't you see what the fight has been about? Can't you see the reason why the enemies tried to keep you in such a state of amnesia? Can't you see why the, the enemies tried so hard to convince the world that God is a tyrant, that God is a meanie, he hates humanity? He's just, he's just a dad who wants his children back. He's just a dad that wants his children back. All of creation groans, 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 groans. I um, spent some time on YouTube listening to the planets. Do you know that the planets sing? Do you know that just like how every single person has their own unique sound that's been framed up by your upbringing, by your biology, by your DNA, by your experiences, by how much coffee you've had? Do you know that there are not any two planets that have the same sound? because they're so far apart you can't hear them at the same time so these kids on YouTube they take the audio of all these different planets and they they put them all they put them all together to create a choir of 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 the cosmos and these are just these are only with the planets that are close enough for us to be able to track their sound David he had some revelation didn't he when he would lead not just people into worship, but he would lead everything with breath, and he would begin to describe the trees, and he began to, dis- to, to describe the, the hills, that David had this revelation that all of creation was created to glorify and to reveal its creator. In the word, it even says that if, if the sons and daughters of God don't cry out, that even the rocks, even those things that don't even have mouths, that, that they will cry. And Paul would say that all the creation is groaning, waiting in a place of eager travail for the sons and daughters of God to wake up, show up, speak up, take authority back, lean in with the sword, make things right. Merry Christmas, church. He has come. He's come. He's come. The light of man, the light of nations. He has come. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the revelation that is packed in Genesis chapter 1. Surely one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. This incredible place of one one of the, it's just this place of, of a good and perfect gift that came from your heart, created by your mouth, and hosted by your presence for your sons and daughters to take dominion of, to partner with, and to co-create with you for your beautiful glory. We thank you that as a church, as a bride, we are waking up to our authority. We are waking up to our destiny. We are waking up to the reality that we're gonna be here a while and we're gonna be doing some mighty things with Elohim mighty God be glorified be glorified in our lives be glorified in our timeline be glorified in our sound be glorified in our preferences be glorified in our decisions be glorified in our thoughts be glorified in our will be glorified be glorified in our parenting be glorified in our marriages be glorified in our homes be glorified in what we create let what we create have the ability to likewise create and to create and to create. Let it be beautiful. Let it be functional. Let it be tov. Thank you, Father, for this sandbox. Thank you for giving us the keys. We say yes. All God's children said, 
Amen and amen. Hey, Merry Christmas. We'll be back tonight at uh, 6 p.m. for our Advent service. If you need prayer for anything, we'd love to pray for you. You don't have to leave yet. Um, we have fathers and mothers that will stand up here. They'll pray for healing, deliverance. If you just need a friend, a father, whatever you need, uh, come on up, and we'd love to pray with you and stand with you. Love you guys.